Hey, what's up everyone, Ollie here. So I haven't done a Q&A for a while now. It's been a few months, been a few months. I think I did one just after my sort of cancer treatment. But obviously, because it's been a while, I thought I'd do another one. You guys have your questions and it'd be a good Q&A for this year. So the first question, which I think is probably one of the most popular questions that I get is, how am I feeling right now with my cancer and stuff? How are things going? Whatever else. And yeah, I'm feeling pretty damn good. <laughs> I mean, there's no other way to put it. I'm, I'm doing really well. Having my regular scans, having my regular checkups and stuff. I had an operation at the end of December, just before Christmas. I had an orchidectomy, orchiectomy, depending on where you are. It's pressed, said in different ways, pronounced in different ways. And yeah, it's been, it's been nearly four weeks since I've had that. So I'm feeling much more, actually, I think it has been four weeks since I have had that. But yeah, I'm feeling much better. Able to walk properly again. When I first had it, I was walking around like an old man. I could barely even sit up. I could barely even laugh. It felt like all my guts were gonna come out. <laughs> it wasn't It wasn't a pleasant feeling at all. So yeah, I'm pretty much nearly back to my normal self. I just need to get back into fitness again. I haven't done anything fitness related since like June last year, June, July last year. Um, so yeah, I really need to get back into sort of sorting out my health and getting back into fitness. What was your favorite cell phone in the early 2000s? Which phone has the best design before the iPhone era? That's a really good question. And a phone that I had in 2004 was the Nokia 7600. I don't know if anyone remembers that phone. I'll put a picture of it up on the screen. But yeah, the Nokia 7600, it was a square phone, but it had like two rounded corners and two sharp corners, but it was a wicked phone. I absolutely loved that phone. I got it secondhand. It was released in 2003, but I got it secondhand the next year. I think I bought it for like 40 pounds, 40, 50 pounds. Yeah, I, I got my parents to buy it for me. I bought it on eBay secondhand. It wasn't in the best shape, but hey, I was a kid. I was like a young teenager, so I didn't care. I was like, hey, I got a new phone. This is really, really exciting. If I actually look at the specs of it, it had a two inch screen, two inch screen, amazing. 128 pixels by 160 pixels. God damn. When we look at phones now, 128 pixels by 160 pixels. That's actually just laughable. It had a 0.3 megapixel camera. Jesus. What a camera, hey? And then an 850 milliamp hour battery. It also had only 29 megabytes of storage. It had no SD card slot. 29 megabytes of storage. I think one of my pictures that I take on my Sony A7S III is more than 29 megabytes. But I remember I made the most of that phone anyway. I packed like three or four of my favorite songs on it and just used to listen to them on repeat. I absolutely love that phone. I can't remember if it was considered a smartphone though. What actually makes a smartphone a smartphone? Because with this phone, you could put music on it and I think you could even install some sort of like apps on it as well. But I can't remember exactly. Anyway, that was definitely one of my favorite phones from the early 2000s. There's also a bunch of great phones that came out in movies like, um, like the Matrix phone, the slide phone in Matrix, the slide out Nokia phone. I thought that was a proper gangster phone. It just looked wicked, you know, getting it out of your pocket, whipping it out, sliding it down. Going on a phone call, I just thought that was so much fun and just looked wicked in the movies. If you could start a new online business from scratch, what would you do? This is a really good question. And something that I've always loved the idea of doing is starting a software as a service, a SaaS business. I don't know what in, but I've always liked the idea of having a photography app or photography service because I used to love uploading on Instagram. I don't upload to Instagram all that often anymore. I don't put that much effort into it anymore mainly because I feel like Instagram is going in all different directions. It's, it's definitely become more of a very sort of social media app rather than a photography sort of sharing app like it was when it first started. So I'd love to make like a proper photography sharing app, something where people could go just to share their amazing pictures, get feedback for pictures, things like that, because I really do love photography. I love taking pictures. And I think it'd be awesome to make an app or a service like that. I used to enjoy using Flickr. Flickr was great. Most people now don't even know what Flickr is anymore. But yeah, I used to love uploading pictures on Flickr. Just really passionate about photography in general. I also want to quickly say for anyone who's interested in business and finance and other sort of related stuff, I've started a second channel and I'm going to be moving all of my business and finance related stuff over to that channel because I just feel like People who are interested in tech and gadgets and smartphones and laptops and stuff may not be necessarily properly interested in finance stuff. So I just wanted to slowly separate them out 
have two channels and yeah, upload maybe a video a week on each one because the finance channel, the business channel, I say is actually quite easy for me to run. And a lot of people do have a lot of questions about how I run my businesses, finance, all that sort of stuff. So I can share that sort of stuff on that channel. So if you guys are interested, make sure to subscribe to that channel. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. Have you always been this confident? And if not, how did you build it up? And yeah, this is a really good question actually. And if anyone actually goes back and looks through my other videos, especially my early videos, you can see I wasn't confident on camera at all. I've definitely come a long way. And I remember doing my first video, it was very nerve wracking, but it's one of those things where once you've done it, once you've actually uploaded the video, once you put your face on camera, after that, it's just like, huh, why was I making such a big deal out of it? Why don't I just do this anyway? And it's funny because I actually don't think I am that confident. I might appear confident on camera, mainly because I'm doing videos on my own. You know, I don't have like lots of people watching me or anything, which is funny because there's thousands of people who watch this video. <laughs> but in real life, I'd say I'm, I'm pretty normal. I'm pretty average. I'd, I wouldn't say I'm more confident than the next person. I'd say I'm just pretty average and normal. I think you'll find that with most YouTubers. A lot of YouTubers that you see are really energetic and have lots of energy on camera and really sort of express themselves. Aren't like that in real life at all, you know, because they just feel a bit more comfortable in, in front of camera. So I don't think you necessarily have to be super confident to put yourself on camera, but I do think the more and more you do it, the more natural you become at it anyway. When you are starting a YouTube channel, what is the first big purchase you should make? Computer, camera, audio, lighting, or editing software. Maybe the main big purchase you should make is a computer, for example. I still highly recommend, if you're doing video editing, uploading videos and stuff like that, an M1 MacBook Air or an M1 MacBook Pro. For a thousand dollars, a thousand pounds, it really is a fantastic machine and obviously you're not just going to be using it for YouTube you're going to be using it for everything whether it be work research watching videos just so much stuff you can do so much with a computer and I think spending money on a good computer like that is definitely worth it because it's something you're going to be using every day and I think you've got to look at it as sort of a long-term investment if I spend a thousand dollars on this computer how much money will I make in return and I think Spending $1,000 on a MacBook is, is well worth it for a lot of people. The other thing is Apple devices in general hold their value so well. So if you buy a MacBook and you wanna sell it in two years, you may have only lost around three, four hundred dollars, three or four hundred pounds. So really it's cost you three or four hundred dollars to have that computer for two years. So really do think about you're not actually spending $1,000 and it's gone away forever. You're putting your money into an asset and that asset is going to make you money and then you can sell that asset later on, obviously for a lower price, but you've also still made money from that asset anyway. Would you ever get a pet? And if so, what and what would you call it? I'd love a dog. I don't know what type of dog and I'd probably call it Pepe. I think Pepe is, is a cool name. Did you go to university? Now I am actually asked this question quite a lot and I've answered it in previous Q and A's, but I know a lot of you are new subscribers and stuff. So yeah, I didn't go to university. I thought to myself when I finished school, I try my web business and doing web design and things like that for a year or two, see how it goes. If it works, then I carry on with that. If it doesn't and it fails, then I go to university. And I was fortunate enough, it worked out. You know, I was making pretty decent money sort of just doing web design projects for clients. What would be the best camera for recording YouTube videos for a YouTube channel that is under a thousand subscribers, I assume? That's what they're trying to ask anyway. Your phone, this is what I always say, use your phone. Really don't overthink about getting an expensive camera or anything. Just use your phone. The best camera that you have is usually in your pocket. Smartphone cameras these days are just so, so good. That like honestly, if I did have to start my YouTube channel again and I didn't have any expensive cameras or anything like that, I would use my iPhone, no doubt about it. What tech are you most looking forward to this year? So I'm looking forward to all of the new Apple devices that Apple apparently is rumored to announce, like the M1 MacBook Pro 16 inch, the M1 MacBook Pro 14 inch, apparently they might bring a 14 inch out, the M1 iMac, the new Mac Pro, and apparently they're going to be making a mini Mac Pro as well. They're also apparently going to be making a new a new external display. They have the Pro Display XDR, which is like five grand. I was so close to buying one, but it just didn't really make sense. Considering that it's a fifth of the price, it's not going to give me five times the performance. So I kind of just weighed it up and just went with the LG Ultrafine 5K display. So yeah, there's a lot of new stuff that's going to be coming from Apple this year and I'm really excited to get my hands on it and try it out and see how it can sort of upgrade my workflow and my workspace. Do you have family? No, I fell from the heavens. Do you do much coding these days or is most of your work design work done with Figma? Yeah, so I actually do a lot of coding work, but I don't do it for clients. I do it a lot for myself. For example, my own website that's based on WordPress, HTML, CSS. I do all of that myself. My Shopify website, ulxstore.com. I code all of that myself as well. I designed all of that myself. 
yeah, I feel like I do do a good mix of coding and designing. It's definitely very 50-50, but when a client comes to me and they want some stuff done, I always say to them that I'm only a designer, I don't do development, mainly because I have a lot more experience in design and I feel more comfortable doing design in programs like Figma and Sketch than I would say coding up a website or something like that. What are some of your lesser known passions? Um, I'm trying to think stuff that I don't share on YouTube as much. Gaming, I really, really, really enjoy gaming. I spend way too much time playing games, video games and stuff. I love interior design. I feel like part of me thinks I'd love to do interior design as a job it would be so much fun but with interior design you need money and you need clients and stuff and you know it's it's, it's a lot of work so yeah i feel like those are definitely two of my lesser known passion and stuff that i don't share too much on youtube and stuff but i do share it now and again on instagram and stuff but yeah those are just some of my sort of lesser known passions you could say travel plans once everything is back to normal so it's funny because i actually don't like going on planes i hate the whole faff with traveling I wish you could just teleport from one place to the other place. I hate all the time spent getting on planes, going through security, all this sort of stuff. It's just so much work. I'm also in a very fortunate position where I'm able to travel pretty much anywhere. I can afford to travel anywhere. And sometimes I travel for work. Sometimes some of the brands and stuff I work with will fly me out to different places. And it's a shame not everyone gets the opportunity. So I know I'm super lucky to have those sorts of opportunities. But on my list for the next places that I want to travel to, Maybe somewhere in Asia, maybe somewhere like Singapore, Japan, uh, maybe Canada. I haven't been to Canada in a while. Never visited Toronto, it would be cool to go to Toronto. I've been to America so many times, I just feel like there's no point going there anymore because I've just seen everything. I absolutely love California in general. Southern California is my vibe, I absolutely love that place. Uh, but I've been there like three or four times now, so it doesn't really make sense just to go again when I can afford to see somewhere else completely new. Because, you know, I've never been to Singapore, I've never been to Japan, I've been to Greece, uh, never been to Africa, would like to go to Africa. Um, there's a lot of places that I haven't been to yet. I haven't even been to many places in Europe yet. I haven't been to France. I've driven through France, but I haven't actually like been there. I haven't been to Paris or anything, I haven't been to Spain. There's so many places that I, I still need to go and I haven't had a chance to go to. So I think once, the coronavirus and everything goes away and everything gets back to normal i'll start traveling again and see what i fancy because the great thing about my job and my work and stuff is that i don't need to be at home i can technically do it from anywhere i mean i just like working from home i actually really enjoy working from home i'm very much used to the work from home lifestyle and working up by myself i really enjoy it if you guys are interested make sure to subscribe to my newsletter i share content on there not shared anywhere else mainly because it just doesn't make sense to share it anywhere else and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.